Good morning, everybody. We're going to get started. And uh, it's really a privilege to have the opportunity to kind of share some thoughts with you this morning. My name is Clint Longnecker. I'm a 29-year veteran of the College of Business and Innovation and uh, a longtime instructor in this program. We are so thankful to have each and every person here this morning. We're here to celebrate you. Uh, and it's sort of funny, last night I, it was one of those days where you go to work at 7 and I got home last night a little after 11, probably closer to 11.15 and I had forgotten that I had to finish painting a room. Uh, we have a room with 1975 shag carpet in it and it had to go. We had carpet people come and as I walked in the door, Cindy said, well, you know, you do need to finish doing that uh, room. So I ended up painting until about two in the morning and I went to bed and here's the funny part I got up this morning out of bed I was so fired up to be here this morning because we're celebrating people who are taking a really active step to improve what they do how well they do it and kind of who they are if you would and it makes it a special time for all of us to get up and kind of really uh, rejoice if you would about being at the University of Toledo so we're very appreciative to have each and every person here this morning my job as the MC of this gathering this morning is to keep us on the clock uh, and to forget about wittiness and joke telling and all those things, but rather to make this all about you. So without further ado, I just want to share uh, a quick couple recognition things. We would like to have a special thanks for Chuck Leonard. We're going to get to him in a bit uh, for underwriting this activity. Dr. Tom Sharkey, Dr. Tom Gutteridge, longtime supporters of this initiative. We're very thankful. Well, could we ask the staff, uh, the faculty who have taught in the program to stand up this morning? If you were right in your seats, hop up out of those seats. Come on, don't be shy now. This is not the time to be shy this morning. Let's give it up. We are very, very thankful for that. And uh, I, am I just want to say, too, from the bottom of my heart, what a privilege to be able to work with great people through this program over the years. So without further ado, I would like to introduce uh, a very important person to this initiative, Dr. Tom Sharkey, Interim Dean of the College of Business and Innovation. And we're very thankful to have Tom back from India this morning. So let's give it up for Tom. Thank you very much, Clint. Um, I've actually been here uh, 30 years. University of Toledo. Good morning to you all. Um, congratulations to those receiving certificates today. On behalf of the College of Business and Innovation, I'm pleased that we, the college, and our faculty got to play a part um, and are partly responsible for these programs. Um, and um, it wouldn't have been, we wouldn't have been able to do this without the support of, of Chuck and and the other top administrator, administrative leaders of the university. So thank you, Chuck. Appreciate it. Um, I feel these courses are incredibly important to uh, the continued development of our staff, of our faculty, or of our staff family and faculty, and so forth, if you will. Many thanks to those who have made these courses possible, including especially uh, Carrie Herr and Albert Curtis. So thank you so much, Glenda Church. Appreciate it. At this time, I'd like to introduce a person who needs no introductions. Uh, and we're just very thankful to have Chuck Leonard here this morning to share some thoughts. I think we should slow clap him in this morning. Are we ready to go? Thank you, Clint. Um, most of my career has dealt with physical assets. The university, and we're having an age contest or a seniority contest, so it's 34 years for me, Tom, wherever you're in. <laughs> um, but the, the University of Toledo owns about $3 billion worth of assets. Our buildings, our land, our equipment, about $3 billion. And we, we keep those assets in good shape to keep them efficient, to keep them beautiful, to make them functionally efficient. But the most important assets we have are sitting here in this room, and the rest of your colleagues at the University of Toledo, our employees, are our most valuable assets. And these courses are an investment in those assets, just like we invest in roofs and flooring and uh, windows and exterior of buildings to keep them maintained. We invest in your future. So this is a really important program, and I'm glad you all went through it, and I want to congratulate each and every one of you for going through it. 
Dr. Jacobs couldn't be with us today. He's uh, in D.C. doing some diplomatic work, so I want to pass along congratulations from Dr. Jacobs as well. So congratulations to each and every one of you. Thank you very much for your participation. Now, before we introduce our guest speaker this morning, I thought it would be quite appropriate if uh, at our tables to kind of get a little engagement here this morning. Uh, we went around and made sure that everybody introduced themselves. And if you would, share one thing that you've learned in the last 30 days. And you have about three minutes to complete this assignment. So everybody gets to introduce themselves, how long they've been at UT. And when you're finished, I want you to share one thing you've learned in the last 30 days. On your mark, get set, and go. Okay, everybody, thanks for jumping in this morning. Who learned something about a fellow UT employee this morning uh, that they thought was kind of interesting? Put those hands up. If you learned something about a fellow UT employee this morning, we, at our table, we, we learned how to hang drywall. We learned why Swanton is called Swanton because it used to be Swan Town. This is useful stuff. We learned how to wire speakers. <laughs> Uh, assemble furniture, hang drive. We could go through a long list of things, but uh, there's lots to learn. And, and I really appreciate uh, the fact that uh, our, our President Emeritus, Dr. Dan Johnson, who's a lifelong learner, has taken time out of his very busy schedule. Uh, for those of you who know uh, Dr. Johnson, he came to UT uh, a few years ago already and came from the University of Alaska. He has a very distinguished academic career. Uh, I had the privilege of meeting with him one of his first days on campus, and I was very much impressed with just what, what a, a kind and focused and principled leader that was taking the helm of our institution. It was really a neat thing to see and to witness firsthand and to get to know him and his lovely wife as just being terrific people. Uh, we know that uh, he is, when he uh, stepped down as the president during the merger, uh, we know he went off and became the president of a school in the, in, in the Middle East and uh, had some wonderful experiences there as well. But the thing I really appreciate about Dr. Johnson is his humility and his common sense and his look at the world. He sees things that a lot of us are so busy going here and there don't necessarily pick up on. So we're very privileged to have Dr. Johnson come and share some thoughts with us this morning. Uh, his remarks, Kerry has taken the liberty of preparing uh, his remarks you'll be able to pick up afterwards. He recently spoke at our executive MBA graduation, and I have to say from the bottom of my heart, it was a very thought-provoking, it was a very stimulating, it was a very motivating and a very encouraging rem uh, set of remarks that he shared with us. And uh, we're very thankful, Dr. Jay, to have you here this morning. So let's give him a big round of applause, everybody. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Clint. I'd like to know who uh, knows how to hang drywall. I've got a job for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sammy. Uh, great. Well, thanks uh, very much, Clint. It's uh, a real pleasure and honor uh, to be here with you this morning and to join with others in congratulating you for your commitment to learning, your commitment to professionalism, for your commitment to leadership, and uh, we sense it here this morning, and all of us here want to express our appreciation for not only your commitment to improving yourself, but your commitment to improving our university, the University of Toledo. I have all of 10 minutes to tell you uh, some secrets that might hopefully inspire you to even more accomplishments in the future. My first little secret is this, and that is while uh, you, uh, while, uh, you have inspired us as much as I hope we've inspired you, 
that we really think of inspiration coming from faculty, staff, and students in that direction. But the truth is, it's the workers, the people in the room, the people that do the jobs that really inspire those in leadership roles and administrative roles. And that's a secret that I think many of us have already recognized. The direction of inspiration really is in the opposite direction than we usually think. So speaking on behalf of myself, Clint Longnecker, Chuck Leonard, Dean Gutteridge, Carrie Herr, and all of those, we want to thank you for really inspiring us. And uh, you are the inspiration at this university, whether you recognize that or not. You know, you might uh, think that uh, this was just a workshop that you went through or a training course, no big deal. But I want you to know it is a big deal. There's nothing more inspiring to an educator than a person who takes learning seriously. And it is becoming clear every day. There is no way one can truly succeed in life or in work in this rapidly changing world without learning. So we're here this morning to celebrate the product of your learning experience. I told you my little secret, and that is you inspire us rather than us trying to inspire you. But I know that you have a secret too, probably have lots of them. And one of your secrets I know really has to do with why we're here this morning, and that's learning. Using every chance that you have, using every opportunity that you have to learn something new. Now, you may have not told anyone, and maybe you haven't even clearly articulated it to yourself. But your actions speak for themselves. Your secret is out. We're on to you. We know you're a learner. When I was going over to this this morning, first thing, I hadn't had my first cup of coffee. And I got down there, and I said to myself, going through this, your secret is out. You're a loser. But I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew I had to drink my coffee and make sure I didn't say the wrong thing. We know that you're not a loser, you're a learner. I don't need to tell uh, anyone in this room that we live in a knowledge economy. Knowledge really is the currency that drives not only education, knowledge is the major driver in business, healthcare, communications, technology, government, our military, nearly every facet of life. It even drives recreation and sports. And you and I are the building blocks of the knowledge economy. Whether we like the language or not, we are the human capital in the knowledge economy. Our ability to contribute to and to be rewarded by the knowledge economy is based in large measure on what we know the knowledge that we have acquired, acquired from our parents, acquired from our schools, some of it we acquired on the streets, in our churches or synagogues or mosques, from TV and the media, from our friends, our family, and so many other sources. We don't even know where a lot of our knowledge comes from. So in addition to the many sources of knowledge, this process takes many forms. They're formal and informal. We learn from experience. Some, I've heard people say they learn through osmosis. I've never figured that one out, but uh, some people have said that. But in fact, learning comes from synthesizing many different uh, forms and sources of information and many types of experiences. It's just like saving money is the process by which we build a bank account. Learning is the process by which we build a body of knowledge. When we were kids, all of us, attending school was compulsory, remember? We had to do it. But learning is not compulsory. We can choose to remain ignorant and sadly, consciously or unconsciously, many opt for ignorance.
But even when we decide we want to learn, it doesn't happen all at once. Acquiring knowledge is a lifelong process. It's a building process. Every little piece of knowledge forms part of the foundation on which we can add more knowledge. There are no shortcuts. And I think we've all found that out from experience. But one of the most effective and efficient ways of learning today is through compact, focused, intense courses, just like the one you've completed. That's a pretty well-kept secret that needs to be told. We need to take more advantage of these opportunities for quick courses and training programs. Programs like this provide a framework for adding to your knowledge base, and yes, these courses have intrinsic value, but their true value will depend on how you apply what you've learned. Their real value is in their application. May I repeat that? Their real value, the value of the course that you've taken and that we're celebrating here this morning is in its application. It's Thanks, Clint. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's not the certificate that counts most, and we love to hang them on the wall, and I've got a, one or two of them myself. Uh, but it's about applying and implementing both in and out of the workplace what you've learned in the course. And I think one of the best secrets that you will ever learn, that any of us will ever learn, is the power of application and the power of implementing what you know. Most of us really don't act on all that we know for a lot of reasons. All of you learned something in this certificate uh, program that you did not know before. A little bit of it came out in our roundtable a few minutes ago. You finished the course successfully with more knowledge about leadership, customer service, Six Sigma, finance and budgeting, project management, human resource management, and so forth. What we want you to know now is that the, we want you to be able to extract the value that the, of the knowledge that you've gained in this workshop and from this learning experience and apply it in your workplace, in your home, and in everyday life. All of us here today know from experience that learning comes with a price. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes study, concentration, reflection, and just plain hard work. It takes time that you could be spending with your family or friends, it keeps you from watching your favorite television station perhaps, or going to the movies, or going shopping, or it may even prevent you from taking that vacation that you want to take and that you feel that you've earned. So it doesn't come easy. Learning does come with a price, but with that price, I like to remind my students, there is something called a price earnings ratio, right? Your broker will call it P&E. Others may call it ROI, or return on investment. When you begin thinking you want to invest in the stock market, let's say, or you want to understand the stock market and equities a little more, one of the first things you learn is how to establish the value of a stock. It's not just the price of a stock that determines its value. It's the return on that stock, the earnings that help you determine its value. It's the P.E., price earnings ratio, or the ROI, as they say, the return on investment. The return on your investment in learning is not just the knowledge that you acquired. The return on your investment in learning is what you do with that knowledge. I'm talking about the price earning ratio, of course, in its broadest sense. Money, yes, perhaps, who knows? You might get a promotion, you might get a raise because of your new knowledge or skill, and I hope that happens. It'd be great. But more important than money in calculating your earnings is the quality of your life, the life of your mind, 
and your increased capacity for leadership. All of this comes with learning and your ability and willingness to apply your knowledge. This may be one of the most important secrets you will ever hear. But here's another secret, one you usually don't learn until you're in your 50s and 60s, and there are a few people that are coming close to that in the room. Learning doesn't always make your life easier, okay? A lot of times we invest in learning because we think it's gonna make our life easier. But learning doesn't always make your life easier. In fact, it can make your life more difficult and more challenging. With more learning, there frequently comes more responsibility, which usually translates into bigger challenges, harder decisions, and longer hours. It can lead to decisions that involve greater risk and require more courage. You may find yourself making decisions that affect other people and the quality of their lives. Don't be surprised. A life of learning can and probably will lead to more responsibility, and with that responsibility comes greater challenges, harder work, and greater risks. But life is like that, isn't it? I'm reminded of the biblical verse, to whom much is given, much shall be required. This morning we are here to recognize you and your accomplishments with the successful completion of this workshop, this course, you are better prepared today than you were before you took the course. You really are. You might feel the same, but you're better prepared today than you were before you went through this process. You are better prepared to carry out your job, to teach others, to improve the effectiveness of your office, and even to lead others to do the same. But you know, Life can turn on a dime, and little things can mean a lot. My life, for example, was changed dramatically by a chance encounter with my favorite professor in the hallway during my senior year at Texas Christian University. It really did change my life, and if we had another 10 minutes or so, I'd love to tell you the story, but we don't. But believe me, that brief encounter, which lasted probably no more than three or four minutes, changed the course of my life in a way that I've been forever grateful. But believe me, and I know that you know it is true, little things can mean a lot, and your life can literally turn on a dime, a conversation, an idea, or even a small piece of information something you've heard or learned in this course, however small and insignificant it may have seemed, may have the power to change your life if you let it. We used to talk about the importance of staying the course. You've heard the phrase. And I do believe there is great value in persistence and keeping your focus. But I also know that the world that we live in, that we work in, that we invest in and we plan for is changing very rapidly. So here's my last secret, and this may surprise you just a little bit. Staying the course today may not be the best advice one can give or take. Our world will continue to change at an ever increasing rate of speed. If you stay the course, no matter what, as we have sometimes been taught, you may miss out on opportunities or even jeopardize your future. Following the same path day after day, year after year, staying the course would be great advice and would be a great philosophy if the world was stable and unchanging. But it's not. The world is changing rapidly and even faster than we even recognize. So be ready to chart a new course if needed. Use the knowledge you've gained in this program to help guide you in charting this new course. The key, of course, is to never give up learning, commit to being a lifelong learner, but recognize that learning also means change. Find the courage to speak out 
but I also encourage you to dig a little deeper and find the additional courage it takes to be quiet and to listen. The secret to learning is listening. I believe that you, everyone in this room, are well on your way to a new level of performance in your job, in your career, in your life. And if we could meet here five years from now, you would see that that statement is true. So all the best to you. You have a few secrets here. You don't have to keep them. You can share them with someone else. Thank you very much, and thank you, Clint. Yeah. Thanks. That was very encouraging, and I really appreciate the fact that he really talked about slowing down and stopping to think and listen. So thank you very much, Dr. Johnson. We appreciate your input and uh, are very excited to have the next part. Um, as I was driving in this morning, I was thinking about this institution. I love this place. Uh, I remember as a kid coming to the University to watch football games. I remember as a high school junior and senior being recruited to play football here. I remember at the uh, banquet when I got my first letter at the university, what a big deal that was to me. And I remember uh, being encouraged to go on and get an MBA here by uh, Jack Simonetti and some other terrific people that I've known over the years who mentored me and encouraged me. And I remember, you know, starting and, and teaching a class out here uh, back in 1978 for the first time as a part-time instructor. And what a treat that was. And I remember thinking, man, this is so neat to be here. And I really appreciate the fact that when it was, I finished my PhD, I went back to school with the encouragement to go get a PhD by people in this room and some other folks around town and some folks who have long since retired, but encouragement. Uh, and I started thinking about coming back to the University of Toledo when I had some other options. I looked at other schools and I came back to Toledo because of the people. And I think 29 years later, uh, you know, everything about my life, I never go anywhere without wearing my University of Toledo pin because the University of Toledo has been so good to me and we're surrounded by great people, if you would. And everything we do, whether it is our students or looking out for each other, uh, what, what a blessing to work at this place. The home I own today, and Chuck and I were talking about that, you know, uh, I own that home because of the University of Toledo. Uh, my daughter has her degree and is at Ohio State University because the University of Toledo paid for her tuition. What a blessing. This is remarkable stuff. So I can go, I, I kind of stand before you a, as a person who's been so touched by this institution and so touched by people like yourselves. And I'd go back to Dr. Johnson's comment. Three minute, four minute conversation had a profound impact on him because of who we are and what we do on any given day we can have a significant impact in the lives of people around us. We are in a very noble profession, in a noble institution, doing noble and life-changing work, and never, ever, ever underestimate the power that we possess by our actions and our words to create other people around us who have an image and a vision for the future of this institution as well. So I just wanted to dovetail and say thank you so very much. Now, for the best part of any kind of celebration, is recognizing the people here this morning who have done awesome work. So we're going to kick off with uh, our certificate program members for exceptional customer service. So if we could have them come, oh, I'm sorry, forgive me, Carrie. I look at Carrie's reaction. Oh, I'm just working list the UT leadership certificate, if we could. So could we have them come and line up along the wall over here in alphabetical order, use the name tags as such. So you have 10 seconds to come forward. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. I really appreciate the swagger. Are you picking up on the swagger in that step of people coming up here this morning? So everybody, here's the drill. We're going to call your names, and we're going to ask you to come to the podium. You're going to have 20 seconds to share one thing that you learned through the program. And good, Carrie. Yep, we're, I was just going to call the leadership members up. Carrie is our quarterback on all these things, and she knows she's working with the B team here, so she's coaching me. Thank you. Uh, and if we could have Dr. Johnson and Dr. Gutteridge and Dr. Sharkey uh, and Chuck Leonard over here, and also our instructors. So the drill is you're going to come, or you'll, you'll pick up your diploma, and we'll pull that line up here, and you come to the podium, we'll have 20 seconds to share one thing uh, that you've learned. I like Dr. Johnson's notion of application. So what are you doing with the information that you have learned and acquired through this leadership program? And then you'll work the line and shake hands and we'll, we'll hit everybody else accordingly. So without further ado, I'll call off the names and we're going to hand certificates to uh, folks. So here we go this morning. Sherry Blauser, 
Come on up, Sherry. Very good. Walk right to the floor. Yeah, absolutely. I think I learned I should not have changed my name when I got married. I guess what I've learned most, and I use, I try to use every day, is Clint's suggestion to take your first 15 minutes a day and plan your day, figure out what you're going to do. If I don't do that, I feel like I'm not knowing what I'm doing all day and kind of not focused. So. Sure, thank you. Appreciate it. Good network. Thanks. Congratulations, John. Uh, I agree with Sherry. Time management was one of the biggest things I learned from the leadership program. Um, keeping meetings on time, um, being um, conscious of everyone's time and how important it is. Lori DeShelter, thanks. Congratulations. Good morning. I think I shared this with my table this morning. One of the things that I learned, and there were a great many things that we learned in this program, but one was the power of negotiation. We had a great experience. Our group wound up donating to the UT charitable campaign. It was great, but I'm applying that tool in my job. I'm working with school districts right now and trying to build our relationship, and I'm using that negotiation tool. Thank you. Michael Thurston. Thank you. Um, I learned a great many deal thing, many many things as well. Um, one of the things that I learned most was. Uh, the great amount, of, the, the wonderful people that were here, the, the team that I got to work with was exceptional. Um, we had a lot of fun. Um, we learned a lot of very detailed specifics about our craft, and it made us really stop and think about what we're doing day in and day out. Um, but really, you know, the organization affording us the opportunity to actually st take that time out and do that was uh, very, be very beneficial to me, and I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. I think the thing that I, I've learned the most, um, we had a wide variety of topics um, that we went through during the certificate program, and it just kind of brought home to me, it's not just any one thing that we learn or do, um, it's taking all of it into account and kind of pulling it together mm -hmm. on a daily basis from planning to negotiating to customer service to emotional intelligence. I mean, it all is just the big picture and taking that time to reflect um, and knowing that every day is a changing day um, just keeps us on our toes. So I really appreciate the opportunity as well. Thanks, Lisa. Tracy Johns. I think the thing that um, I took that was probably the most valuable is probably being one of the newest employees of one of the city's largest yeah. employers is really making this place a lot smaller. Um, the relationships that we formed and learned about, the importance of them, whether you meet somebody in a parking lot or walking down the hall and see their name on the office or you're calling them up, um, the IT folks especially. <laughs> um, you know, it's nice to have a familiar face and someone who knows you knows what you're about. And so every opportunity that we have to get to know each other a little bit more. And I'm looking forward to future opportunities as well. So thank you all very much. Sherry Gianduzzi. I also appreciated the opportunity of allow being allowed to uh, attend these courses. Um, they were very helpful. We are always in a period of change, um, but the skills that I learned really helped um, with some employment changes that we had to make recently. Um, I felt like I made better decisions as far as a hiring process. We've implemented a weekly morning meeting so we can all be on the same page, more communication. So I really do appreciate the experience. Thank you. Alan Lasu. Thank you. So I've learned a couple of things. The uh, one that um, was one of the stories we looked at where psychologists, psychiatrists were treating their patients and uh, at some point the patients relapse, they don't get better. And when they looked at what the problem was, it turns out they don't respect the psychiatrists because they don't have degrees and stuff on the wall. So then the moral of the story is to do that. So as soon as they started putting where they went to school and their graduation certificates, uh, the patients were getting better. So um, I looked at how I can do that. Now I don't go anywhere without my coat. And uh, <laughs> I get more respect now. 
<laughs> Joe Manor. There was a lot I learned. Uh, it was great working with uh, a lot of the folks in IT and other members. Um, but being a, an Owens and a BG graduate, it was really great to take some classes here at uh, UT and learn how many great professors we really have. So that's what I really took away. Thank you. Mark Miller. How many in this room have uh, do not know someone named Mark Miller? I think I have a very kind. <laughs> I always hear about the Mark Miller in Bowling Green. Was a great quarterback. I I want to meet him. I want to meet him someday. But uh, no, I, I learned a lot from the uh, the courses, and uh, there was a lot of enthusiasm in the rooms from the faculty, and I hope to, that it will make me a better teacher and a better mentor uh, for the people that uh, I lead. Thank you. Thank you. Julia Ripke. What I'd like to say is I'm very appreciative of having this opportunity to go through this course. I've learned a lot from each and every instructor, and I have a great deal of respect for the instructors and for the College of Business. Um, it's a crown, it's a jewel in the crown of University of Toledo. They're just wonderful. And I, I, I do appreciate everybody that was in the class with me. I learned a lot from, from every single person. Thank you. Thank you. Lori Sarms. I appreciated the opportunity to take this course. It was a lot of fun. I learned a lot. It was great to be able to put faces to names that people that I have dealt with and never met before and I hope the program continues. Thank you. I'm going to take a slightly different tack on Clint. The first day of class he said, why are you here? And someone I'd like to take a moment to remember, Joe Kyle said, my boss told me I had to be here. And I said the same thing, because that's in fact what happened. Um, but from every class I learned something. And I think what I learned again, because I forgot it, was never be afraid to learn. And uh, thanks, Joe. Thank you for sharing, Doug. Uh, at this time, we would like to call up the exceptional customer service uh, group. Please come on up to the right and arrange yourself in alphabetical order. This is part of the graduation test. It's part of the test. opportunity to take a good look at how we were serving our students and I think that was the most beneficial because we had to really look at the services we were providing. Were we doing a good job or were we doing a great job? And too often we get very busy and caught up in our day that we forget that that is the most important part of our job. So the course really helped us to take a good look at how we interact with our students. Thank you. Thank you. Bob Fry. I learned that great customer service should and can be practiced by everyone in the university, and I recommend this class to anybody that has the opportunity to take it. Thank you. Ray Guerrero. <clears throat> customer service is a two-way street. Those of us that uh, work here at the university uh, love to give good customer service to our students, and we also like to receive good customer service. And yesterday, I received really good customer service from the IT department. Um, the IT department was in great numbers in our class. And uh, I went to uh, 
their office yesterday with a laptop that just was not functioning correctly. And they dropped what they were doing, they got on it, fixed it within a matter of a few minutes, and I said, thank you so much. And they remembered me from the customer service class, and I said, this is awesome. So thank you. I look blue. I think what I learned from the program most of all is that my department, the American Language Institute, is a great team. There were originally four of us involved in the certificate program. Uh, last fall we were very busy making some rapid organizational improvements, as Clint might say. <laughs> and uh, I was the only one who made the final cut, I guess, but it's not all about me. Um, as a department, the American Language Institute has 35 years of history behind us, and we're moving into the 21st century and hoping with our new partners in CISP and the greater UT community that we can continue to make uh, important contribution to the internationalization of UT. Thanks. Sean Ronville. As I as I stand before you all today, I, I just realize how much of an investment UT uh, provides for us, uh, how they look after us, um, what a wonderful institution we work for, what wonderful people we have, the teamwork, uh, the support I get from each and every one of you, it's, it's shown today. Thank you so much. Tori Stam. I was uh, very appreciative of this opportunity, and uh, one of the most important things that I took was to treat others um, according to the platinum rule instead of the golden rule, which is to treat others the way they want to be treated. Yeah. Kevin Tolman. Uh, a lot of the stuff wasn't so much what you knew or how you knew, but it made you think a lot. And I think that's where I learned a lot about this class. Thanks. Thank you. Cheryl Thomas. We had a great class. Everyone in our class was amazing. Our instructor was amazing. I think we all learned how to be better customer service people. I mean, I think that we all took that back to our office. I know in our office we um, did an evaluation so that people could tell us if we were doing a good job or not. Um, it's so important, first impressions, and it's really important what you do to others and how you treat them. I love my job. I love what I do every day. Um, we made some great videos, and I'm looking forward to seeing those out so that we can be superstars. Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Peter Swantown Thomas. <laughs> what a great introduction. Thank you. But, uh, one of the greatest things I learned from the customer service training is how to train others in, in excellent customer service. And that's one thing I want to give uh, Dr. Levitt credit for, the excellent job in, in empowering us to be excellent teachers. I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. At this time, we'd like to bring up the Six Sigma gang. Now we'll see if they can figure out a process to quickly come up with the correct alphabetical order. <laughs> Mr. Scott Case. Thank you. I guess the biggest thing that I learned during the Six Sigma class is process management. We looked at the whole processes and we looked at every little bit no matter how minute and in some instances that minute thing is the thing that causes the biggest issue of all. So you may have to make sure you look at every process step. Thank you. John Cavett. I feel like I was just here. Um, so in Six Sigma, um, the biggest thing that I learned was Obviously, the tools that they give you to be able to help um, solve a problem, but I think the best thing about that particular course was we were able to use real life issues in our workforce to, to come to a, um, a solution. So 
it was actually applied right through the course. So. Brown D'Amelio. One of the things about the course that I was uh, overly impressed with was the level of professionalism that was uh, exhibited by everyone, including the College of Business, IT support staff, the uh, instructors, the administration. Uh, it made you want to bring your A game. And um, uh, one of the keys that I thought to learning was um, learning is a two-way street. Um, you know, you have to receive a great message and you have to be open to receive that message. And I think we found that. So thank you. Well, I can't stand up here without first thanking um, my supervisor, Dave Kutry, who is a black belt in the Six Sigma, and he challenged me by asking me to take this course. So thanks, Dave. And also thanks to Jim Zare, our wonderful instructor. But most of all, really, I was with a great team, Jim Nowacek and Joe Manor, and I learned from them, uh, just like previous uh, members of the class. I learned from them and I also learned from the people that we worked with in the departments uh, where we were trying to improve uh, the charge capture process. So, uh, and it, it really did show that everyone has a passion for learning and wants to help to make UT and UTMC a better place. Thank you. Rick Kasimiak. Well, um, a lot of what I was going to say was already said, but uh, I learned a lot from this program, especially since we, uh, my partner was Dom and we kind of worked on a project that we we're currently working on live, so it's kind of neat to learn stuff and also um, have it related to everyday um, work. Thank you. Mary Kurtz. Good morning. Just let me say thank you to the University of Toledo. I love it here like most individuals. I've been here my whole career. Um, I embrace every day as a new opportunity. I've worked in the phone service for 20 plus years and every day is a different day. And no problem is too small for me to investigate and figure out and that's one of the things that I learned in Six Sigma is to look at the smallest minute detail because it can impact everything from that point forward. Thank you. Michael Lowry. I've been an advocate of process improvement uh, methodologies, Six Sigma, um, you know, the total quality management before that. And as we went through this course, one of the things that it brought back up to me was that when you have a methodology that a bunch of people embrace and you can collaborate together, it's amazing what you can get done. So thank you. I'd like to thank um, everybody in the business college and all our leaders here and uh, Godfrey for putting the Six Sigma together. Um, it definitely underscores that uh, Life hasn't gotten any easier recently. Uh, thank you for that. Um, learned a lot more about charge reconciliation than I ever really wanted to, but um, <laughs> now that's what we're talking about here. <laughs> um, but it was it was great working with uh, Jim and Diane, and uh, I think I made some friends for life. And looking forward to some more weather so we can go golfing again. Yeah. All right, thank you. Mark Miller. says uh, Six Sigma Green Belt. See, now my kids would like to know that I was like karate chopping somebody or doing something like that, but I'll have to clarify that with them. Uh, with Six Sigma, I learned that I really do love statistics. It's great stuff, and I'm just a number crunching geek. I love that stuff, but um, it, it, what you can do is you can apply this. You can find a way to improve in almost any area with the Six Sigma principles, and it's just a matter of funneling it to pinpoint what you're looking at, but it's uh, the principles can be applied in all kinds of places. Thank you. Jim Nowacek. 
I'd just like to thank um, Jim Zair and Carrie Herr and Ava for putting this program on. Um, was a, I'd highly recommend this program. Um, out of the five phases of Six Sigma, the one that impacted me the most was the control phase and the importance of putting standing operating procedures in place, the importance of putting reports in place to monitor when gains have been made to help sustain those gains. And I'd like to, to thank Diane and Joe again um, for everything and, and being a part of this project with us. Now, if we could bring up the managerial finance and budgeting group, if we could. Let's bring them up here, everybody. Come on down. Thank you, Carrie and Eva, and to our instructors and those responsible for making these programs available. Um, in the course of the uh, classes, I learned a lot more about uh, university budgets, uh, auditing, uh, things that were helpful to me to see the big picture. Um, but much of my job is about relationships, and I learned a lot from all of my classmates that I've been able to apply to my daily job as well. Thank you. Brenda Hummerston. <laughs> well, Swanton is my hometown. It's affectionately known as Swan Tucky, for those of you that didn't know that. Um, I uh, thoroughly in enjoyed this class learning about uh, not only the challenges that the university has in budgeting, but the individual departments um, and learning the, the challenges that our colleagues face and, and their uh, struggles to um, you know, get through these difficult times. And I uh, got to know a lot of people that uh, are beneficial for me to know from my job and they can learn more about uh, the uh, risk management end of the things that I do. Mary Ann Pullman. Uh, I learned in our class uh, problem solving. I know I found out real quick that it's easy to have a problem, but it's not so easy to solve them. So that's the thing I learned the most. Megan Rayfield. Um, this program helped me to look at things from a different perspective, um, to not only look at the department's people strategy, um, which we focus on in human resources, but to also look at it from a financial side and how that impacts. Mary Ann Schuster. I want to thank the university for the time and the opportunity to take these classes for my time away from my job because it was very useful and I was able to take the handouts that we got and share them with some of my colleagues that did not attend the class and I know that if these classes are available again we have some more people who are interested. Jason Toth. I want to start like the many of the rest of you by thanking the university for the opportunity to take this course and, and want to thank my supervisor Chuck Leonard for being an inspiration to me on a daily basis. Uh, what I learned most in this course, I, I take a lot of what Brenda had to say, is getting to know a lot of great individuals that were in the course with me and understanding what they go through on a day to day basis and, and looking at the global perspective of the university as a whole rather than just what I do in facilities and construction. So this is a great place. I enjoy being here every day, and thanks again. Hisham Yusuf. 
First of all, I'd like to thank uh, our instructors and our leader, the University of Toledo. It is my honor and pleasure to be a UT employee for seven years now. Uh, uh, I owe a lot for University of Toledo. Uh, University of Toledo has a great impact in my life. I got my MBA in 2010, and which is I never, <clears throat> which I never think before to go back to school after 22 years. Uh, finish my degree in accounting from Alexandria, Egypt. And here we are. Um, I, le I learned a lot from this program. I um, learned how to think outside the box and how to analyze problem and get um, solution with um, cost efficient and time efficient. Thank you so much. Let's bring up the project management folks, if we could. And while they come forward, we want to encourage everybody to stick around. We're going to very quickly, in less than five minutes, take pictures of you and your graduation class with instructors and with uh, administrative leaders as well. So we're really excited about snapping some good pictures with everybody. else in the room, I'd like to thank everybody for giving me the opportunity to take this, um, this course. I graduated from here many years ago. Um, Twenty years later, I came back um, to work here. And one of the first questions I was asked is, why do you want to work here? Um, my response was, I wanted to make a difference. And I'm sure everybody in this room has that same kind of feeling. We see it every day. Um, and this course has taken me the opportunity to make a difference not only in my career and who I touch at the university, but those individuals that are just coming into the university and, and learning about all this. So I want to thank everybody for giving me this opportunity. Mr. Scott Case. Thank you. I guess the biggest thing I learned about project management is I thought I knew how to do it. But <laughs> a lot of things that came up in it is things you never really think about. And I guess project, manage project management is an art form. You have to really define processes as well as how long they will actually take. And I guess the how long they actually take was the big thing. Because in this, you do not put fluff on timelines. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the biggest <laughs> thing I learned. So thank you. All right, I promise this will be my last time I'm coming up here. And I saved my best speech for last. So first of all, I didn't get a chance. I want to thank all the leaders here for uh, taking the time to come here and um, celebrate with us. Um, I also want to thank Godfrey. He actually, um, in my new role that he has um, challenged me with, he, um, he challenged me not to stay the course, as Dr. Johnson was talking about, to step out of the box. And he challenged me to participate in these programs. And I have to tell you, it's been a very busy six months. Um, <laughs> but I've learned a tremendous amount. And one of, the, one of the interesting things is these three unique courses that I took, and I took project management, the Six Sigma, and the leadership course. Well, project management in itself is almost self-descriptive. It's, it's managing projects. But kind of what I learned was I got to use the tools in the project management to help manage the project that I was doing in Six Sigma. And what I uncovered in the leadership course about time management is that every single day of life is a project, and you have to manage that. You have to figure out from the moment that you wake to the moment that you go to sleep how your day is going to be spent. And these courses have better equipped me of managing my daily activities. So I leave you with that. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity to take this course. It reminded me of the, uh, the fine details of, of project management and uh, certainly need for it here at the university and throughout the many things we do. And so thank you. Al 
Island Lawsuit. So my work at IT involves uh, training the residents, physicians, on how to use the applications. Um, so we, we had a plan on how to train the physicians uh, so that they can chat and do the things the government wants them to do. When we, I woke up at 6 a.m. distraught because using project management principles, I uncovered a huge risk to the plan that we had. And so quickly, we, I emailed everybody, got together, reminded them that they are built in disadvantages with the plan we had and it had to change. And fortunately, they were able to see reason and we were able to do the training in the correct format so that um, we improved their um, compliance from 22% to 92% within a month. So, thank you. I want to say that the information that I gained from this class was value added and also my team was able to walk away with an actual project that we could actually implement within our department that I think can be carried forward throughout the university. Thank you. Leslie Regis. I guess I'd just like to thank the university and Godfrey for the opportunity to take this course. Um, I've only been with the university a little over a year uh, within the IT department, but I love my role within the IT department. And I also know we have a lot of projects, and this course um, taught me that even though I've learned some of the project management concepts before, and they're, they're very numerous and it's a very complex methodology, uh, that you don't have to implement it all at once. It can be an evolution, and even if you just take some of those principles and apply them on a daily basis, or take a few of those tools, uh, that's gonna, um, it's going to improve your ability to be able to complete your projects. So, thank you. And last but certainly not least, our HR certificate folks, come on up if you would. There's three folks out there. And this is something really very cool about this. Uh, all three of the next individuals took the, the course internally, and then they went ahead and sat down for the national PHR exam, and all three passed it on the first go around, which is a big deal. say that no matter how many years, for those of us that still have hair, <laughs> um, that you're associated with a profession, that it's courses like these that help you maintain and keep up-to-date, cutting edge for the 21st century. Denise Short. I'd like to thank the university and Chuck especially for giving us the opportunity to take this. HR is a very important part of any organization and I'm very proud to be part of the HRTD team here at the university. So I want to thank everyone for that. And our closer, closer. Linda. For those of you that know me, being a closer is kind of sometimes part of my job, so I'll be a closer today. <laughs> For those of you that aren't in our field, I, want, I just want to explain a little bit about the program. These were night commitments once a week for three hours for 12 weeks. Uh, we uh, received training, and then we had to study very, very hard for the certificate for the program. There are two uh, types of uh, programs, and we studied for them very, very hard. I received my master's degree in January of 84. I've been in the field for almost 30 years. I've taught for this university, Monroe Community College, Owens. You would think I would know my craft really well, and I thought I did. But the class, seriously, the class allowed me to know more 
about and update my skills, which I think is very important. And I need to set an example for those of us in the department um, of continuing the education. So it was a personal push. I felt a great deal of pressure to pass that exam. It was not an easy exam by any stretch of the imagination. And I was kind of uh, stressing out a little bit about it with Chuck. And he said, oh, you'll pass, no problem. I passed. And it was a personal, professional skill and a goal that I met. And that made me feel good. And that just goes to the application of what Dr. Johnson was saying about that push. So I thank all of you. Thank you. <laughs> Wow, Linda, thank you. What a good close. Absolutely. Well, hey, let's, let's give it up for everybody one more time. If we could, let's give it up for our instructors, administrators, and the like. Thank you. And there's a number of people in this room, as we wrap this up, that don't get a lot of praise around our campus. I want to first point out uh, Don's back there, Don Ryber and his crew are filming, I shouldn't say that, that's old school. They're digitally capturing uh, <laughs> events of every nature all around the university. Last week on Friday, we went out for the Human Resource Management Award for Excellence. We had site visits all over Northwest Ohio, and Don is there lugging his equipment, and we're recognizing some terrific companies. But we can't tell the story, Don, as is true of much of the university without you. We want to thank Mario, who's uh, working the camera today as well. So thanks for your good work. Let's give it up for Don. <laughs> We would be remiss if we didn't recognize Dan Miller, who's another unsung hero of the University of Please make note, he's got both his cameras. He's a two-camera kind of guy. Wherever you go around our campus, you will see Dan snapping pictures. In my uh, I, I'm office, I have an opportunity to see his coming and going from the University Hall, where his office is located. The guy is in and out, and he is remarkable in so many ways. So, Dan, we're thankful for you. So at the end of the day, we want to wrap this up, but we would absolutely, positively be remiss if we didn't ask Carrie Hur to step up here and for a big round of applause. Our quarterback for this program. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, the visual here is very apropos. There's Eva back there, Eva Curtis, always in the background, always with information in her hands to facilitate so that the rest of us can get stuff done. So let's please give it up for her as well. And we are so thankful for Terry Kovacs and our HR department to work internally to help all this unfold rather naturally. So let's give it up for Terry as well. And Terry, thank you for wearing spring colors. Let's, ladies, let's put the black stuff away. Let's put the darker colors away. Uh, last point of the day, uh, as we are celebrating your success, and I'm very uh, pleased to be able to say that we are done 15 minutes ahead of schedule, which means we are practicing what we're preaching in terms of time management, if you would. Uh, but thanks. Uh, last point would be, uh, we are UT. We are the institution. I, I see people quite often, and I sure hope this doesn't sound boastful, but I, when people look at me, I always say, I am the University of Toledo because of who I am, the DNA, the great things that this institution has allowed to happen. We are the university every day you go to work. And we have the ability, as was said multiple times, to make a real difference here. Thank you for being difference makers. I love it. Absolutely, Ray. Thanks so much. So everybody, big round of applause for yourselves. Graduates, if you would stand up, hop up out of those seats. One last round of applause. Thanks, everybody. Now, we are going to ask the Six Sigma people to help us go to the hallway now and very quickly get organized by our areas. We need a process to get pictures very, very quickly. So thanks, everybody. We'll do this on the fly.